everyone, I'm Courtney Courtright. Thanks so much for joining me for nine on the positive side this weekend. Baseball season, of course, has come and gone, but it's a bittersweet conclusion. And we're not talking about the World Series, but a Charlotte baseball park. Folks are seeing the national pastime in a whole different light. John Lee is taking us out to the field of miracles. At Keith Family YMCA in University City, the teams turned out with a sense of finality. Well, I'm a proud uh, Miracle League player, and today is our last game of the season. All right, if we can have our players and coaches please line up along the first and third base lines. The Braves and the Rockies stand for the national anthem, but they also stand for all the good that comes from friendly competition. And that deserves a high five. What's special is you get to see the kids out there doing something that other kids, you know, kind of take for granted. There we go. Great hit. On the weekend before Halloween, some played in costume. Wasting no time, Gabe James, AKA Spider Man. Uh, look it up on the web. The YMCA Miracle League gives people with mental and physical disabilities a chance to have a ball on the diamond in a place where everyone's rooting for you, whether you hit or miss. Great swing by Amelia. Oh, there we go. Folks, he's coming home. What a rush. First score, put your hands together for Andrew. Nicholas Batley, who has autism, is a league veteran. I'm, re I'm ready. I'm going to do my part. My team's going to do the rest. Junior on deck. You know, it's good exercise for me. Um, it's It's been a lot of fun because I just really love this league and it's just a lot of fun that we get to be here. His mom, Wendy, wasn't about to miss the season finale. And Nicholas plays on the competitive league, which is new this year. They actually keep score, um, count outs. Wow, what a great hit. And if you were keeping score, the game was a thriller. Okay, so are Junior score. There we go. With all eyes on the scoreboard, it was the bottom of the second and final inning. Nicholas with a chance to deliver, and boy, did he. There we go. Great hit by Nicholas on the center field. Nicholas smacks the ball into center field to put the Braves in front. His first ever triple. But Nicholas's mother says the 10 5 final score doesn't begin to describe her son's Miracle League experience. Socially, he's become a lot more aware of other people. Um, he's become a better competitor and a great sportsman. After shaking hands with their opponents, the ball players look forward to a year end tradition. Nicholas, our Miracle League chaplain. And our captain. Basically, we get to have trophies at the end of the at the end of the game. And the one who hit in our game-winning RBI today. After that, it kind of gets really kind of sad because you know it's the last game of the season. The Miracle League gives them so much to believe in. I hope all of y'all are coming back next year. And that's why walking away from the season is so bittersweet. Ray. In Charlotte, John Lee, Queen City News. Truly inspiring and heartwarming. A local organization is giving back this holiday season and they need your help. Carolina Dental Specialty Center in Jacksonville is collecting donations for Toys for Tots until December 14th. The office has partnered with the program since 2016. The hope is to make families Christmas celebrations a little brighter. We just want to be sure that Christmas is going to be a happy time for the children when they receive gifts and toys that they could play with. If you'd like to donate, you can stop by their office at 200 Doctors Drive in Jacksonville. One man is living his childhood dream as Chad Tucker shows us he's always wanted a bike and a whole lot more. This is a 1963 Swin Coaster Brake Stingray. All the rage in the 60s was uh, hot rod cars with mag wheels, and so this was made to look like one. Mike Bogler loves bikes. And it had the wide handlebars like the motorcycles had in the 60s. I remember uh, seeing a Stingray for the first time. I said, wow, that is unbelievable. This was the first one you saw a friend have. It was the first one that I ever saw. You got it. It was a 1968 Orange Crate. 
and Mike was hooked. And that's been 1968 till now, I'm still obsessed with it. After two long years, my mother and father, I beg them. He and his brother finally, finally got He one. come running in my bedroom and goes, Mike, Mike, there is a Santa Claus. <laughs> because mom and dad sure couldn't afford these two bikes. <laughs> There's an apple and orange crate in front of the fireplace. To this day, it's the greatest moment of my life. And that feeling came back when he started collecting them, lots of them. I have 25 of the crates, and that is every year, every color. I have 15 stingrays. And Mike can't even ride them. They're kids' bikes. My wife, bless her heart, you know, she kept saying, why do you want to buy something you probably can't even ride? And I said, it takes me back to a great time in my life. 54 years later, I see That moment in time in my, in my of just being a kid and the freedom and adventure a bicycle can give you. You know, I see kids now uh, stay inside and play video games and stuff, and man, you're missing life, you need to get on. In Davidson County, party growing up. North Carolina, I'm Chad Tucker. a love that I can't, I can't explain. If you have a story idea, you can send it over to us. We want to hear about all the positive things happening where you are. Just email newsdesk at wnct.com. Again, it's newsdesk at wnct.com. Dot com. It's what you're looking at on your screen. You can also reach out to me on Facebook or over on Twitter. It's my, my duty right to go in and have them come back home to see their family. So do my part. Honoring our veterans ahead on nine on the positive side. We're taking flight to our nation's capital to see how Honor Flight pays tribute to our veterans. Every year, thousands of veterans are given the opportunity to take an honor flight to the nation's capital. The trips are part of a program to thank veterans and give them the opportunity to see the memorials dedicated to the wars they fought in. Ken Wayne accompanied 28 veterans on an honor flight from San Francisco, some who never had the opportunity to be recognized for their service. The flight arrived at Reagan National Airport and the veterans got quite the surprise when they stepped off the plane. The rest of the weekend was a whirlwind of visits to memorials and museums. The Army Museum featured a riveting segment on Vietnam, the war most of these vets were involved in. At the World War II Memorial, a native of San Francisco's Chinatown explained why he enlisted at the age of 18. Somebody got to bring the soldier back home and who's going to replace them? So I said, well, it's my, my duty right to go in and have them come back home to see their family. So do my part in releasing them. You know? During a lunch stop at the Navy Memorial, the vets were given yet another surprise, a performance by the Marine Corps silent drill team known as the Marching 24. The names of fallen comrades were copied from the Vietnam Wall and tokens left behind in their memory. Four Bay Area veterans had the honor of presenting a wreath at the tomb of the unknown soldier at Arlington Cemetery. The last night featured one of every soldier's favorite military memories, mail call. Only in this case, the letters were from loved ones today, thanking their veteran for their service. Another surprise after the veterans arrived behind schedule at SFO. The plane was delayed by two hours, yet a large crowd remained to give many of these vets the welcome home they never got when they returned from Vietnam. In San Francisco, Ken Wayne reporting. Really is special. If you would like more information on how to support or participate in an honor flight, just go to honorflight.com.
org. And our veterans are helping out others all across our country. Some like Ray struggle to go to the gym and keep a healthy lifestyle after years in the service. But he met Logan, a main veteran who knew he wanted to do something to help his fellow veterans. So he opened a gym called Boots to Health. Along with helping veterans and first responders, it also partners with local recruiting offices to train new enlistees. Logan is working with Ray to gather as a team to help him reach goals. Since Ray has a lot of, he has a neck injury and he has some uh, rods in his back, you got to be more careful with the exercise we do. Being veterans, that's something we hold too dearly, accountability and responsibility. Boots to Help also helps with mental health needs. And if you missed our Veterans Voices special honoring those who serve, you can watch it over on WNCT.com under the Features tab. You can see so many other stories like the one you just saw honoring the service and sacrifice of so many men and women around the nation. Kindness is on the minds of many inside the classroom. Next on 9 on the Positive Side, what these preschoolers are learning and the advice they have for you. Kindness has never been considered an academic subject, but that's not the case for dozens of preschoolers at a school in New York. Philanthropy and giving have become a focus of their curriculum every day. Monica Morales has more on how one's Queen School is teaching lessons in kindness at a very young age. These are our tiniest philanthropists. Hi, guys. Hey. Pix11 News was invited to a special class of precocious preschoolers at the Learning Experience School in Long Island City. Every day, these kids learn their ABCs and 123s. But here, Every afternoon, they also learn about philanthropy. Adelina, can you help us think of some things we can donate to people who need? Yeah. What? What can we uh, donate? We, we, we give people toys. Toys? Uh, coats. Coats. That's a good idea, too, for when it gets cold out. Three-year-old Adelina Moly, who took our mic and also stole our heart seems to get what it's all about. So what's today's lesson about? Uh, volunteering. Is it fun to volunteer? Yeah. Why? Because it's fun. These kids are practicing kindness in the classroom and learning how to give back to their community through a one-of-a-kind curriculum. The meaning of kindness is when we stop to think about somebody else. Math and reading are key. But doing good deeds and helping neighbors is just as important. It's never too young to teach kindness. It's the most important lesson we can teach young children. They don't just talk about kindness. These kids already raised more than $5,000 for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. It's a life skill. Adults could use this. Oh, absolutely. Thursday, there is a special lesson about the importance of volunteering. You'll see the word volunteer in the middle of our poster. With the help of their teachers and a pair of imaginary dogs, Grace the Greyhound, and Charity Chihuahua. How do you be nice to someone? How can you be nice? Yeah. These kids are learning life lessons that will last a lifetime. Kindness rules. Kindness rules. You're so right. And these future philanthropists are not done with their acts of kindness just yet. They're arranging a food and toy drive for the holidays. If you want more information about what these kids are up to, just go to my Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter at Monica Morales TV. In Long Island City, Monica Morales, PIX11 News. And speaking of kindness, the countdown to a California man's birthday is on. But what's special about this is he's using his birthday as a way to give back to his community. This is Brian Chiliakos. He turns 30 soon and he's on a mission to do 30 acts of kindness before the big day. He started his day giving out nearly 120 animal care packages to shelter workers. The packages have things like vitamins, healthy snacks, and also bath products. It doesn't take long to realize that Brian gets just as much fulfillment from his act of kindness as those on the receiving end. It's so nice for them to realize that people in the community are really and truly are thinking about them. Brian also went to go and give firefighters desserts. After he did that, he went to a middle school to hand out school supplies for teachers and students. If you're looking for more good news, just go to WNCT.com. There you'll find these stories and more under the nine on the positive side tab. You can find it under features. We also have all of our nine on the positive side shows there as well. If you want to rewatch any. Give me 
grammar questions? Nine on the positive side, meet the woman traveling the country to spread her passion for grammar. In a world full of emojis, grammar still matters. CBS's Steve Hartman found that out on the road. What would you think if you were out walking, shopping, or doing some other gerund? Hello. And out of nowhere. Give me grammar questions. A woman on the street prepositioned okay. you. Over is a preposition, what? under is a preposition. Okay. You might think, whom is this crazy lady? Do you have any grammar questions? Who sees grammar as such an imperative that she sets up a table just to talk about it? Because I love grammar so much and also... You couldn't think of anything more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the anchor. Like right now, we're using words. This wouldn't even be happening. We'd just be looking at each other. As we first reported in 2019, Ellen Joven runs a company training people in business communications. But her real passion is linguistics. So to share her knowledge and have some fun, Ellen began setting up her grammar table around New York City, where she lives. And it went so well, she took the table to the collective noun that is America. It on the road around the country. We caught up with her here in New Hope, Pennsylvania, where Ellen reminded people how to diagram sentences. I bet you remember this. Explained when to use who and whom. Whom, and do you know why? And even answered something I've always wondered about. Does the period have to go inside the quotation mark, or can it go outside in certain circumstances? How about the story Steve did on the grammar lady was interesting. Where does the period go there? Because I'm using interesting in like an ironic I, I, way. Yes, I understand that completely, <laughs> but it always goes inside. So in this sentence. But Ellen says her favorite part is settling grammar disputes between husbands and wives. In my experience, usually if a couple comes up, usually the woman is right. I mean, in my limited I'm, I'm experience. I'm grammarless right now. <laughs> she hung me out like a dangling modifier, but you gotta love her passion. Since we first told this story, Ellen has taken her table across the country and even written a book about the experience called Rebel with a Clause. Ellen says Americans are way more interested in grammar than some cynical reporters would have you believe. And she may be right. Yes! I mean, this guy at a red light just had to know. Do you always capitalize after a colon? If it's only a piece of a sentence, definitely no cap. Okay. Yeah. That made her day. Bye! One more proper usage in Ellen's never-ending quest to make us all gooder at wording stuff. Thank you for stopping by. Steve Bye. Hartman on the road in New Hope, Pennsylvania. <laughs> And thank you so much for watching Nine on the Positive Side this weekend. We'll see you right back here next weekend. Have a great day, everyone.